Today I'm going to show you what comes with the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 1.1, then I'll give you a quick overview of the controls, and we'll finish off with the tutorial on how to spin. So this is the box that the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 1.1 comes in. Inside you will find, this is a card that you can share with your friends. Here's a card that goes to the instructions um, on how to use it. You probably found this video on that site. And then it's got a nice plastic card, which is a spin card. And we'll actually talk about how to use this a little bit later in the video. Also in the box, there's a USB cable. This will plug into any USB type A port. So you can plug this into a phone charger or it can also plug into battery bags. So if you want to make it ultra portable, you can do that. And I have lots of uh, videos and web pages that sort of explain what you need to look for in a battery pack if you want to power your electric eel wheel nano from a battery pack. Comes with a power plug and this is um, a North American type plug, but it does support different voltages. So anywhere in the world, you can uh, get a converter plug for this and then it'll fit into different types of outlets around the world and you don't have to worry about voltage because this will handle the different voltages. You also will get uh, five bobbins that aren't assembled in a pack or in two packages like this. And lastly, there's the actual electric eel wheel nano, which looks like this. So to use it, all you have to do is plug your USB port in, or I'm just using the wall power here, and you plug it in, and now you can turn it on, and it goes. This power switch has three positions. The forward position has a Z. This means it is Z twist. The middle position is off, and the back position is S twist. Z and S twist modes spin the flyer in opposite directions. This is important when plying multiple singles together into multiply yarn. And we'll cover that later in this video when we explain how to spin yarn. For now, I'll just say that Z and S positions make the flyer spin in opposite directions. This is a speed control. It controls how fast the flyer spins. If you turn it counterclockwise, it goes slower like this. If you turn it clockwise, it goes faster, like this. This black elastic string is called the tension band. It runs through these little slots like this. The tighter you pull it, the more uptake your yarn will have. Uptake is the amount of pull your yarn has on your hands when spinning. We suggest you start with a light tension and uptake. On the front of the flyer is this piece which is called the orifice reducer. The purpose of this is to reduce the size of the orifice hole on the front of the nano. While using this piece is optional, some people like using it when spinning because it reduces the wobble of the yarn. That said, if you don't want to use the orifice reducer, you can easily remove it. These sliding yarn hooks guide the yarn before it goes onto the bobbin. Most of the time you will only use two of these at a time and the setup will look like this. When the bobbin starts to get a bump of yarn on it, stop the flyer and then slide the hook like this. Next I'll show you how you can change bobbins. You just put the tension band behind the back of the case and the drive belt in front of the front of the case. Then you lift off the flyer, remove the rear bearing, and then change bobbins. If you need to change your drive belt, you can also do this right now. After that, you just reverse the procedure and you have an empty bobbin that is ready to spin. One thing to double check is that the drive belt is on the motor pulley and the flyer pulley, like this. Now we're going to cover the basics of spinning using the Electric Eel Wheel Nano. This part of the video will have a lot in common with other videos using different spinning wheels. There are entire books and long video series that cover spinning techniques in much more detail than we'll do here. The purpose of this video is just to give you the basic info you need to get started. When you first get your Nano, one of the things you'll want to do is attach lead yarn to each bobbin. This gives you something to attach your fiber to. There are lots of different ways of attaching lead yarn to a bobbin, and if you search this topic, lots of people have different methods. 
The one we typically use is to tie the lead yarn to the bobbin like this and then attach a piece of tape to it. The tape prevents the yarn from slipping on the bobbin. If the yarn does slip on the bobbin, then the yarn won't spin correctly. So make sure you either use a knot that doesn't slip or put a piece of tape on it like this to prevent slipping. Now we're going to go back to an earlier topic where we mentioned that this switch lets you choose the direction the flyer spins, which we called Z and S twist. When we say Z and S twist, we are referring to the direction of the twist of the yarn. The Nano comes with this spin card that helps you determine the direction of the twist in your yarn. See how the angle of the yarn matches the slope of the middle part of the Z? And with this, the yarn matches the middle part of the S. That is how you determine if you have Z or S twist in your yarn. The reason these twists are important is because when combining multiple single strands together in a process called plying, you need to set the twist to the opposite of whatever twist was used when spinning the singles. If you don't use the opposite twist, then when you try to apply the singles together, it just won't work. What we generally do is use Z twist for all the singles and S twist when plying. If you do this, then the singles and plying will always just work. So with that information, let's start spinning. The first thing you want to do is string the lead yarn through the slide hooks like this. Then use the orifice hook to pull the lead yarn out the front of the nano. Now before we start, make sure that the power switch is in the Z position since we are spinning a single. Check that the tension is fairly light. Now attach your single to the lead yarn. Turn the speed control to a slow speed to start spinning. You'll want to keep the speed low while learning to spin. Here we are spinning. As you can see, we are spreading out the fiber in our upper hand and then letting it slowly go into the single we are spinning. The spreading out of the fibers in the upper hand and feeding it into the single is called drafting. Once you start spinning, you'll notice that your yarn starts getting pulled onto the bobbin. This is called uptake. If you want more uptake, you can make the tension band tighter. If you want less uptake, make the tension band looser. After spinning for a while, there will be a bump of singles on the bobbin. Now is the time to stop the nano, slide the yarn hook like this, and then start spinning again. When the bobbin is full, it can hold about two ounces of yarn. And there's this mark on the bobbin to show when the bobbin is half full. We will talk about plying in a little bit, but in that process, you will combine two or more bobbins. So if you fill these bobbins only halfway, then you will find that all of your singles fit onto a single plied bobbin. One of the more difficult parts when spinning is keeping the twist where you want it when you are drafting. When you spin, you want the twist in the thin single you're spinning. However, if you don't keep this top finger pinched correctly, the twist will travel into your fiber and this will prevent you from drafting your yarn the way you want to. Here is an example of what happens if you let the twist travel up into your fiber. If this happens just a little, you might be able to fix it. But if not, you'll have to stop your spinning wheel and either draft out this fiber or remove the twisted fiber. Now is a good time to talk about under and overspun yarn since it is a common issue for new spinners. If you underspin your yarn, it will tend to break like this. If it breaks, you will need to re-thread your yarn on the flyer. You may find that it keeps breaking and in this case you will want to remove more of your yarn from the bobbin until you get to a stronger section and then start spinning at that point.
If you overspin your yarn, you will get clumps where it twists in on itself like this. Those little clumps can sometimes get stuck on the sliding hooks or in the orifice hole. If that happens, you won't have any uptake and this will cause your yarn to get even more overspun until it eventually breaks. So if that happens and you have no uptake, you should wind the bobbin manually until all those chunky parts are on the bobbin and you can start spinning normally again. Here is an example of properly spun yarn. One technique some people think helps when you are learning to spin is pre-drafting. This is where you take your fiber and spread it out before spinning so that it is easier to draft while spinning. You can spread it out into long thin pieces or you can just fluff it out a little bit. Either way, the goal is to make the drafting process easier while you are learning. You may also find that pre-drafting is more or less useful for you depending on the type of fiber you are spinning since some fibers are easier to spin than others. With some practice, you shouldn't need to do much pre-drafting, but while learning to spin, it might be useful. When you eventually get a few bobbins full of single threads, it is time to combine or ply those threads into yarn. While plying, as we said earlier, you want to set the nano to spin in the opposite direction as the singles. So in this case, we're going to set the switch to S-twist. After that, you start spinning. Plying is actually a little easier because you don't have to worry about your yarn breaking as much as you do when you're making singles. So there you have it. Those are the basic things you need to start spinning. There are many more advanced topics not covered here, like different types of plying, how to spin thicker or thinner yarn, or ways to make your yarn more consistent, to name a few. Those are topics covered by many other videos out there, so once you start to get the basics down, there's plenty more to learn. Happy spinning!